الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Dear Islamic brothers, dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel, welcome back to another beautiful episode of the Silsila, Discourses of Attar. At the beginning of the Silsila, remember, try to make as many good intentions as possible to gain maximum rewards. For example, I will listen to the Silsila for the pleasure of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. I will note down whatever important points they are in and try to practice upon them, try to encourage them to my family, my spouse, my children, my friends, my society. In this manner, try to make as many more good intentions to gain maximum rewards, inshallah ta'ala. Indeed, there are many, many countless benefits and blessings in reciting the Rood Sharif, Salawat, salutations upon Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. One beautiful hadith mentioned in al qawlul Badi' that the beloved Rasul Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam has mentioned that person who recites the Rood Sharif salawat or salutations upon me 50 times every day I will shake hands with him on the day of judgment Subhanallah Sallu ala al-Habib Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Salatan wa salaman alayka ya Rasulullah Who does not want to shake hands the blessed hands of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa sallam. Make it our habit to read constantly on a daily basis as many duruds and salawat as we possibly can to gain these kind of benefits for the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal and His beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wa sallam. Dear Islamic brothers, dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel, a person who says, I want to rectify myself. We need to learn from the blessed sunnah, from the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa from the life of Sahaba Karam and the glorious saints rahimahumullah ta'ala, how they would rectify themselves. These are lessons for us. As we mentioned before in our previous episode that Amir al-Mu'mineen, Sayyidina Umar al-Faruq al-A'adham radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he would perform self-accountability self on a daily basis. He would actually hit his foot and he would question himself that tell me what did you do today in this manner we too must ask ourselves our nafs in particular the inner self what did I do today forget whatever good remember our evil remember our sins and ask forgiveness sincerely in the call of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal once Sayyidina Umar al Farooq al Adam radiyallahu ta'ala anhu had stated O oh people Perform accountability of your actions before the day of judgment comes and you are held accountable for. Dear Islamic brothers, dear listeners and viewers of Madani channel, reviewing our past deeds is called muhasaba. Muhasaba means self-accountability. May we become regular in performing Fikr Madina every night for accountability of our nafs, our base self, our lower self, regarding the deeds that we have done in the entire day, so that we may remain aware of our profit and loss in the wealth of our deeds, just as businessmen do. Businessmen, if we take this example, a business partner is asked for the details of the accounts. Similarly, it is very important to be cautious in the accountability of the nafs because the nafs the lower self the base carnal self and desires the nafs is very clever and cunning and deceiving it portrays its non-compliance as compliance in order to show goodness in doing evil but in fact there is only vice in the deed not only this we should also seek accountability of the nafs in all the, legit the legitimate matters 
as well in order to deform ourselves in a true sense. If we find guilty of our nafs, that is our nafs, if it is guilty, we should sternly ask it to make up for whatever losses are there. Same was the good practice of our beloved saints, rahimahumullah ta'ala. A great scholar and tabi'i, Sayyiduna Ahnaf bin Qais radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he would pick up a lamp in his hand at night and he would put his thumb on the flame. What would he do? He would put his thumb on the flame of this lamp and he would state, Oh nafs, why did you do that? Why did you eat that? Etc. May Allah Azza wa have mercy upon him and forgive us without accountability for his sake. Amin bijahin nabi and amin sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Meaning that this saint, Rahmatullah ta'ala alayhi, would perform accountability of his nafs. If his nafs made any error, then it must be warned. For example, here that the flame of this lamp is indeed very light in intensity. Even then, it is unbearable. Think about it. Can we do this? Could we put even the tip of our finger on a flame? We cannot. Hujjatul Islam, the proof of Islam. Sayyidina Imam Muhammad bin Muhammad bin Muhammad Ghazali, alihi rahmatullahi wali, while narrating another similar incident, has stated that Sayyidina Majma' rahmatullahi ta'ala alihi once looked up and unintentionally he had glanced at a woman on the top of a roof. Immediately he lowered his eyes and felt so much of shame that he vowed and took an oath to never look up again. Subhanallah. May Allah Azza wa have mercy upon him and forgive us without accountability for his sake. Ameen. Bijahin Nabi al Amin, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alihi wa Alihi wa Sallam. Dear Islamic brothers, dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel, have you noticed what type of Madani mindset that our saints, Rahimahumullah Ta'ala, they had? If, for example, they glanced at a woman unintentionally, although an accidental glance is forgiven, they would make a vow, an oath to never look up again. That is, they would perform permanent Kufli Madina of the eyes. Kufli Madina is an, another concept of Dawud Islami. That our Shaykh Tariqat, Amir Ahl Sunnat, the founder of Dawud Islami, has an Allama Mawlana Abu Bilal, Muhammad Ilyas Tar Qadri, Razwi Zia'i Dhamud Barakatumul Aliyah, has taught us this Kufli Madina is to place that spiritual lock or spiritual guard of Madina on our organs, our eyes, our ears, our tongue, our heart from looking, listening, speaking or thinking of evil and bad. Once His Eminence Sayyiduna Khaja Ibrahim bin Adham Alihi Rahmatullahi Al-Akram went to a public bathroom to wash himself. The attendant of this bathroom stopped him and asked him for some money as a fee to enter and he said if you do not give me this fee this money I will not allow you to enter listening to this Sayyidina Ibrahim bin Adham alayhi rahmatullahi al-akram began to cry the attendant got very worried and asked requested okay if you don't have any money with you it's no problem you can Wash yourself for free. Sayyiduna Khaja Ibrahim bin Adham alayhi rahmatullahi al-akram stated, I did not cry because you prevented me, because you stopped me. The reason was that today, the reason was that today I was stopped due to some money from entering into this public bathroom in which pious and sinners both wash themselves. If I would be stopped from entering Jannah, Paradise, the high residence of the pious ones, due to the scarcity and the very few good deeds that I have, 
What will I do? Allahu Akbar. May Allah Azza wa Jal have mercy upon him and forgive us without accountability for his sake. Ameen bijahin nabiyyil ameen sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa alihi wa sallam. Dear Islamic brothers, dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel, these are the accounts of those spiritual people, our blessed awliya Allah, the friends of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal, upon the heads of whom Allah Azza wa Jal has graced the crowns of wilaya, sainthood. See how these holy saints, rahimahumullah ta'ala, even after attaining these high ranks of wilaya and sainthood, they would still perform self-accountability and hold their nafs accountable in order to reform it and they would consider themselves as sinners and guilty ones. May we also have this spirit to reform ourselves and may we succeed inshallah ta'ala in performing accountability of our deeds before death, before the angel of death comes to snatch our soul. From this previous account, we have learned that the pious servants of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal make the worldly calamities a means of contemplation for the afterlife. In relation to this, let us see another event, another incident in this regard. The famous commentator of the Holy Quran, the writer of Khaza'in al Irfan, Fi Tafsir al Quran, the Khalifa and successor of Al Hazrat Rahmatullah Ta'ala Ali. Sadr al Afadil, Allama Mawlana Sayyid Muhammad Naimuddin Murad Abadi, Alihi Rahmadullah al Hadi, has stated on page 60 of his famous book, Sawana i Karbala. He states and he writes In Hajjaj bin Yusuf's time, Sayyidina Imam Zainul Abidin, Radiyallah Ta'ala Anhu, was arrested for the second time. Now, who was Imam Zainul Abidin? Anhu? He was the son of Sayyid al-Shuhada, Sayyidina Imam al Hussein Radiyallahu Ta'ala Anhu. Therefore, Imam Zainul Abidin Radiyallahu Ta'ala Anhu was arrested for the second time. His delicate body was bound with heavy chains made of iron, and the guards were deputed to guard him, to look after him. The famous Muhaddith, the master of Hadith, Sayyidina Imam Zuhri عنه, came in his court and upon seeing his condition started to cry. And while expressing his hearty desire, he requested, I cannot bear to see this condition of yours. I wish I would have been imprisoned here in your place. Upon hearing this, Sayyidina Imam Zainul Abidin عنه, stated, Do you think that I am in discomfort because of this imprisonment? The reality is that if I want, I can free myself right now by the grace of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. But there is reward in having sabr and patience in this punishment. In the restriction of these chains is the remembrance of the frightful fires of the hellfire, the chains of fire and the torment of Allah Azza wa Jal. Saying this, he unlocked his feet from the chains and his hands from the handcuffs. May Allah Azza wa Jal have mercy upon him and forgive us without accountability for his sake. Amin bijahin nabiyyil amin sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa alihi wa sallam Sayyiduna Imam Khaja Hassan Basri rahmatullahi ta'ala alihi has stated Hurry up, hurry up What is your life? It is only these breaths that if they stop then the continuation of those deeds will finish through which you gain closeness to Allah Azza wa Jal May Allah Azza wa Jal have mercy on that person who did self-accountability for his deeds and shed a few tears for his sins. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear Islamic brothers, 
dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel, take notice. From head to foot, we are drowned in sins. This is our condition. What sin is there that we do not do? We are not able to do any good deeds actually. And if we do, there is no sign of ikhlas and sincerity in those good actions. By informing people, by telling people about our good deeds, we entrap ourselves in the destruction of showing off ostentation, riyaqari. But unfortunately, we have no concern about the bad and evil consequences of this and about improving ourselves. Furthermore, we assume that we are very intelligent. If somebody calls us foolish, we become that person's enemy. But now, tell me, if a written order of hanging has been issued for a criminal who has run away, the police, the authorities, and they are searching for him, and this foolish person, instead of finding a safe place to hide, he is wandering freely. So will we call this person intelligent? Definitely not. Perhaps we will call this person a fool. Dear Islamic brothers, dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel, the one who has been informed that the one who intentionally misses his salah, his name will be inscribed on the gateway of Jahannam, of hell. The one who misses even one fast during the blessed month of Ramadan without a valid Islamic Shari exemption or health issue, then fasting for his entire life cannot make up for that one fast that he has missed, even if he fasts later on. If you break a promise, then remember, the one who breaks the promise is cursed by Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal, his angels and by all the people. Neither his fard, his compulsory worship, nor his nafl, nor his optional worship is accepted. The one who misuses his eyes to look at ghayr mahram, na mahram woman, or looks at youngsters, at young ones, beardless youngsters, with bad intentions, or watches films and dramas and immodest scenes on the DV, on the DVD, VCR, TV, internet, etc. In cinema houses, must note the one who fills his eyes with haram things, Allah Azza wa Jal will fill his eyes with fire on the day of judgment. The one who has been notified that soon he will have to die because every soul has to embrace death. When his lifetime, his life is completed, death will not be delayed for even a single moment. And he has been informed that after death, upon dying, he has to go into a grave that is dark and frightful for the sinners, for whom they are insects, they are snakes and scorpions, and he will have to stay there for thousands of years. Alas, the grave will squeeze everybody. It will squeeze the pious ones, just like a mother embraces her lost and found son with affection. And the one with whom Allah Azza wa Jal is displeased, the grave, it will squeeze them in such a way that their ribs will break and merge and interlock with each other. Not only this, not only this dear Islamic brothers, dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel, a warning has been given that on the day of judgment, one day, one day on the day of judgment will be equal to 50,000 years, one day. And the sun will be blazing at a distance of one and a quarter miles. Accountability will then take place in this condition. The comforts of Jannah and Paradise will be for the pious people and the hardships of hell will be for the sinners. Despite knowing all of this, if a person does not fear Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal, then that person indeed is at loss. 
that person who does not possess the proper fear of the hardships of death, the terrors of the grave, and the horrors that will be on the day of judgment and the punishments of hell. That person who sleeps in negligence and heedlessness does not offer his salahs, does not fast in the month of Ramadan, does not give his zakah, does not perform hajj in spite of it being fard upon him. That person who has a habit of breaking his promises does not stop lying, backbiting, gossiping, etc. Remains a fanatic of movies and dramas has a hobby of listening to songs and musics. That person who disobeys his parents indeed is at loss. If he does not reform himself, we cannot consider him a wise person. Indeed, this person is very, very foolish. May Allah Azza wa Jal include us amongst those who are wise, those who fear his punishment, those who prepare for the grave, for comfort in the grave and the hereafter. Ameen. Bijahin Nabi Al Amin, Sallallahu Ta'ala, Alihi wa Alihi wa Sallam. Sallu ala al Habib, Sallallahu Ta'ala, ala Muhammad, Sallallahu Alihi wa Sallam. Attar is my guide, Attar is my guide, by the grace of Allah, Attar is my guide. My murshid has changed millions of lives, the prophetic sunnah, he is revived. The leader of the Sunnis, he is our pride. By the grace of Allah, Attar is my guide.